Who here is an instructor? Raise your hands. All right. Which means, who here is a Project Aware instructor? All right. Who here has actually taught a Project Aware? All right. That's better than half. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I guarantee you that when I do this in member forms or when I do this in, in a, an IDC or, or any of the above, that hand goes, oh. It, it's true. And I guarantee you the number one reason why people haven't taught the Project Aware is, first of all, they didn't know that there were lesson guides. They just came out two months ago, but, but OK. And they didn't know what kind of a tool they had in the Project Aware. Right? So the very first thing, so what I'm going to do here, I don't need to teach you guys a Project Aware specialty. You guys, you guys get it. What I want to do is show you the tools that are already built in the Project Aware lesson guides and the course itself, the tools that are, that is, are offered you to then take this to use it towards promoting the culture of Con Ed, promoting the, the culture of gear, gear ownership, right? As well as the environment. You all have knowledge of views in front of you. It's a three-page knowledge of you. It's page 42 to 44 in the instructor manual. Just photocopy them and get them that knowledge of you. Have them fill out the knowledge of you while you go. While you're doing the course, have them fill out the knowledge of you. Did you not get a knowledge of you? Here. Because this is going to be their signed confession. Literally. This is where they're going to say what they want. And you're going to be able to show them and say this. And then you want to have them take this home, put it on the refrigerator so that they can say, oh, yeah, I, I said that I wanted to do that big performance buoyancy course. That's right. That's why Ross keeps calling me about that. Oh. So go ahead. Um, the other thing that we're going to do, <coughs> all I need, and this is the same thing but on both sheets, so I only gave one per table. All I need from you is your name, your instructor number, your email. And I'm going to certify you as Project Aware and show you how easy it is. Obviously, the Project Aware course, maybe you're going to use the Project Aware course as part of your orientation. Right? How many people have heard, I don't want to do e-learning because I don't have enough personal time with my divers? Right? OK. I'm going to give you a way to give your instructors more time with their divers. That's, that's it. Because, and furthermore, this is going to make an environmentally minded diver who is already thinking about stuff before they get in the water. Right? So obviously, you're going to talk about the mission. You want to have the 10 tips available, right? You're going to go through uh, the knowledge of views. Again, have them have the knowledge of views right there. Then you're going to show them how to stay connected, and you're going to certify them. Now, here we go. We follow the 10 tips. Choose to donate a Project Aware version of your PADI certification card. Talk about the card. Anybody 100% uh, aware store? All right. This is another one of those opportunities to say, by the way, we believe in Project Aware so enough, and we believe in the environment that we want everybody to go 100% aware. Why? What? What is 100% aware means that, first of all, you get, uh, you get rebates on some of the Project Aware materials on the website. Right. The most important one is that all of the cards that they receive are Project Aware cards. Right. Now. Here's, here's something, and it's just a thought for those of you who haven't gone or if you want to incorporate, because you can literally say to all of your, your divers that they are donating, just by taking a course with you, they are donating to Project Aware because you have incorporated $1. Most dive centers are able to take and able to, like, let's say, Project Aware is $250 a month or it's $10 per card, right? That's part of being 100% aware. All right, 
most stores are able to track and find that they have 250 transactions in a month. Gear rentals, gear sales, any of the above. Do you think that you are able to add $1, just $1, to those transactions? Probably, and probably pretty easily. That way you can actually say to everybody that comes into your store that they are donating to Project Aware. You are a 100% aware store. They are, they are donating to Project Aware. We are an environmentally friendly dive center. And all you've done is augment that sale by a buck, right? So that in itself is a way to make it happen. Of course, we're going to talk about Dive Against Debris. Of course, you're going to talk about Project Aware has been around for 27 years. It is a non-for-profit. They are there for campaigns. They are there to, to create policy. The only way that you can create policy is if you've got information, debris, all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about that. But again, show them the course of the Project Aware is the, the mission is to get back to a healthy ocean, right? And yeah, you need to be a little bit passionate. You need to have somebody that's in front of this, this class saying, hey, guys, by the way, this is the playground. How many, how many people have seen their kids go to a playground that's got a sand, sand bed, right? Which could also be called, like, cat litter. <laughs> right? And your kids are playing in it. Ew! Well, that's what it's like to dive in, in some of these dive sites that we go to. This is what Project Aware needs to be about, right? So you get that open water suit, and they have no idea what it looks like to, to be underwater because the reason why they've come to you in the first place is because they had a dream of doing this and peeking under the surface of the ocean. They want to see what's underneath there. That's your opportunity to show them that dream. But now it's your opportunity to, to teach them how to keep that dream healthy, right? Then you talk about being a buoyancy expert. Why? Because everything underwater is alive until you touch it. No touchy-touchy, right? So of course, you're going to be talking about the fact that, they, that during this course, during the open water course, you're going to be working on the buoyancy. You're going to be doing neutral buoyancy. We're going to teach you how to do some nice finning stuff. Maybe we can play with a BC. Maybe we can even do a peak performance buoyancy as part of this course. Do you notice some of the things that I'm dropping in your mind right now? So when, when I talk about being neutral underwater, when I talk about being gentle and gliding and trimming, and, and I then, the very next thing, go to an action item that says, in the next six months, what three things are you going to do to be a buoyancy expert? What do you think they're going to write down on this knowledge of you? Go ahead, write down. What, what are you going to write down on your knowledge of you? PPB. What are you going to write down? PPB. What do you? PPB. Right? I haven't, and I haven't even had to do anything. All I've had to do is show you some pictures of, of what it's like to be underwater talk to you about the living life of being underwater and how we want to respect it. They ask about it. What else might somebody talk about? Or uh, what, what else might you bring up for buoyancy? Well, trim, so. Trim, so? Have the proper gear. Have the proper gear, right? There's a BC just waiting for you. <laughs> Why not? Again, it's that same adage. If they don't know about it, they're not going to ask about it. You're not suddenly going to get a student walking in, you know what, I want to take the open water course and I want to link it. I want to link it to the PPB and I want to link it. You're not going to get, I'm sorry, you're just, you know, John Wayne doesn't exist anymore. But if you show it to them, they're going to say, hey, I, just, I really like that PPB idea that you had. Then you go further. You talk about being a role model, right? As instructors, how do, do you have a, a certain position that you dive in? Yeah. Always lying down. Always lying. Pretty. Maybe some people dive like this. Some people dive like this. Some people dive like this. They don't usually dive like this, right? 
Most people don't fin like this. They do all these kinds of things. So you're going to talk about the fact that they're going to see this kind of stuff. Then when you're even in the confined water, they're going to see you doing stuff. How, how many of you instructors have that warm, fuzzy feeling when students come up to you like this? <laughs> like, oh, my babies! You know? They don't even know why they're doing it. It's the same thing. Trick them into learning. I had one of my students the other day, he's now a dive master, but they were in the pool with helping with an open water class and I was walking by the pool deck and he goes, they were talking about buoyancy. And then she, the instructor was telling them, don't swim with your hands. And he goes, yeah, because Eric will give you a stick. Because <laughs> apparently during his open water class, he kept swimming with his hands, so I gave him their length of rope, but apparently a stick at some point. And that's how he learned to control them. You give them a rock to cherish. Mm -hmm. Something to keep their hands busy because they right. have to keep doing it. Or you, you simply you, you say, put your fin up for me. Which is bigger, your fin or your hand? You spent a whole lot of money on those fins, didn't you? You want to use them? Right? So it's the same thing. Show them about being a role model. Talk to them about being a role model. Talk to them, and not just a role model underwater, on the surface, too. You know, you see something on, on, the, on the street, pick it up. Especially plastic, where, did, where does 95% of plastic go? In the ocean. And if you don't tell them that, they don't get it. Those of you who, those of you who live here, what does it say on all the gutters? This water drinks the ocean. This water drink, and you don't even live here, right. <laughs> but yeah, and if, again, if they don't know that, that's not their fault. It's not their fault. So it's part of, part of you, the instructor, the Project Aware instructor, to show this to them. Because then you've got another action item. I love these things because it gets them involved. What three things can you do to become a better role model for the planet, fins on and fins off? What do you think might be one? Yeah. Conserve, like going to a hotel, for example. Okay. Not using every shampoo. Not using every shampoo. That's excellent. I bring my own. Oh, cool. Yeah. Reuse your towel. Sure. Sure. Reusable containers. Exactly. I was just. Water fountains that have the clicker or the. Have water fountains. Yeah, we we put them here in Patty. Yeah. Reusable. And how many how many of you guys could put a reusable container at the at the checkout? Right? So it's that impulse but Oh, look. Or maybe it's part of your course. So you've got that value that, that you're concerned about again. My IDCs, I had a water bottle at everybody's spot when they first signed up. Sunset House, when you check in, Dan Grant came in, they give you a reusable bottle. They don't give you bottles of water on the boat. Exactly. The cooler, you can go fill up before you get on the boat every day. So again. It's got their logo on. I didn't ask exactly what I was getting. Again, Project Aware, just by teaching the specialty, look at all the things that you can spiral off of. Right? Because then you talk about taking only photos, leave only bubbles. So, yeah, take only photos. Don't touch stuff. I was actually, I, there's, uh, anybody know what uh, antler coral looks like? Yeah, do you know what, like, the, the deer antlers, when they're in velvet, it's really fuzzy, and it looks like it's so soft, so soft. Yeah, you want to. Well, I was, I was, I, it was one of my IDC candidates, and he goes right up and goes, Bruh. I almost turned his air off. I, <laughs> I was trying to find a way not to break a standard and turn his air off. I couldn't, so I didn't. So I said, you? Up, let's go. So we went up, and then just as I was about to lay into him, that, you know, because sometimes, I don't know about you guys, I've got the good guy and the bad guy, you know? You gotta tell him that he was dead. No, be nice, you're the good. So this guy won out, because this guy said to me, you never told him not to touch it. And you never told him 
that if you touch that, it will die. So I went, okay, note self, evil self. Make sure they understand that, again, everything underwater is alive until you touch it. Right? So when people are doing the bicycle kick and you come up and you try and get their legs up and you try and get their legs up and you go, it's not their fault they're doing the bicycle kick. You didn't show them and tell them how important it is not to and then get them into that PPP course to be in that position. Right? So take that. Take that time. So taking food, has anybody ever seen people take pictures like this? <laughs> Don't you just want to turn their hair off? Yeah. So what might be something that you might talk about when, how can photos be used to raise awareness on social media? Identify one environmental concern in your local area that would benefit. What, what specialty might, might you be able to talk about right now? Dive against debris, what else? How do you take the photos? Underwater photography, yeah. And again, this is as the instructor. I've already talked about the fact that when you posted, how many people go on to uh, Facebook and you're scrolling along, scrolling along, oh, turtle, I like that. And you're scrolling around, oh, seahorse, I like that, right? You like all those stuff, you can't help it. Taking, po taking photos like this, helps the awareness of being underwater. The awareness for the, the landlocked people that aren't underwater get what it's be like to be underwater. Both good and bad, and we'll show you, we'll show you some of the bad too, because when you take photos of the bad stuff too, the debris, things like that, and you post it, th that again is the awareness. But again, we've spiraled to doing a digital underwater photography course. Just by saying, in my digital underwater course, I'm not going to just teach you how to take a photo. I'm going to teach you how to get into the position to take a photo. Right? Breathe in. Get away from it. Breathe out. Get a little bit closer. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. This way you're not going touch. I'm going to teach you how to breathe a dive. And that's specifically something that I teach in my digital underwater photography. Breathe your dives. Breathe your photos. Right? I'm going to teach you how to do the back pop fin kick and all that kind of good stuff. It sounds kind of like, ooh. But it's not that hard. And again, if you don't tell them that you can do this, that they can do this they, they, together, that part of the course, they're not going to ask for it. They're going to go, I'm, I've got a GoPro, I can do this. Or they're going to strap it to their head. You know? I love those people that strap to their head, and you're watching, and suddenly the screen goes shrink, shrink because your head is going like this. <laughs> then protect your underwater life. This is, again, this is that, that thing that I've said. Everything underwater is alive until you touch it. Let them know. Let them know about, you know, you know where do you, we love to, to like the turtle photo on Facebook. Where does the turtle go to breathe? Up. Where do we usually go to pet the pretty turtle? Above it. Oh, pretty turtle. You know, first of all, you don't need to pet a turtle. It's not going to purr. The other thing is, let that turtle be. If the, if, and teach them, let them know. If they come to you, that's, you know, okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. I had a loggerhead that came to me. I was in a rebreather. I was like, dude, man, you're big, and I'm not going to date you. No. Well, but that's cool. All right. They do. <laughs> they do. And, like, conks. But are they going to come to you if you're doing this? No, but if you're, if you're trimmed out, they're more likely to interact with you. What might you be talking about for trimming out? PPB, right? And then here we go. We've got another take action. What marine animal interactions have you seen? List previous experiences, marine. In my discussion, in my presentation, have I talked up any about Marine interactions? No. Is that my loggerhead? Right? Talk about this stuff beforehand so that you can offer them little gems. Right? In, the ID, in your IDC, you, you were trained to tell a dive story. Right? 
And the whole point is to, it's like that, you know, that video that you're on the surface and wonderful things don't just happen here, but they happen here and it takes you underwater. That moment is magic. And that's what giving those students is. This is what Project Aware allows you to do without even thinking about it. Without even thinking about it, and what they're doing is they're learning about the environment at the same time. Right? And they're writing this stuff down. Has anybody seen a cool marine animal interaction underwater? What? Uh, we were in Belize, and the hurricane was coming the next day, and the animals had this unusual behavior. So we saw animals together that that shouldn't be together. The 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 surface yeah. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. It was yeah. like watching yeah. Discovery Channel. It was amazing. Wow! Cool. It had a manatee grabbing around the lake. Oh! I like manatees because they're kind of like, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Huh? how's it going? We used to, they used to swim in the lagoon that we would be doing uh, rescue sevens. And they'd be going, hey man, need some help? I can, I can help. Yeah. What about you? Well, I don't know if you, uh, you are familiar with triggerfish, uh -huh. especially uh, around March, April, when that's their mating season. So if you get too close to your nest, well, you're going to get attacked. So one time I was diving in Kotao, and uh, I was with two other buddies, and now I was posing as a dive. And all, all of a sudden, something hits my leg, and I turn around. I've been there, right? So I turn back, and I keep going. And then something starts pulling on my, my fin. So I turn back around, and there's a trigger fish, giant trigger fish, about this size, biting on my fin. And he actually ripped it. So it was a flipper. It wasn't, uh, I wasn't wearing booties. And he ripped it off my foot. So I was swimming away on one fin, trying to get back to my friends. And I get back to them, and I go, uh, Trigger fish over there. <laughs> look at look at my fins. So I, you don't understand. Okay, just come. So he come. shot you in the leg? No. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we had to swim back and find my fin. But and like, I have pictures. You see the trigger fish's is, 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 uh, his teeth marks on the fin of this bait. All right. So the, the lesson here is know where the <laughs> know where the trigger fish are and give them their space, especially during that period of the year. Fish ID. Fish ID. Exactly. <laughs> That's an opportunity to talk about fish ID. I mean, it just, it pours out. You can't help it, right? This, this course just, and the beauty is, people have already asked you to, to offer them something environmentally friendly, right? So you're, you're going through the course from an eco-minded aspect. But then, and you guys are already seeing the, the power of using that eco-minded diving, that eco-minded instructor to produce better divers. So when you're in front of them producing the better divers, that diver is not actually being told they have to do this, you have to do this. No. They're simply being described what it's like to be underwater before they go underwater. So they're saying, and they've written it down. They've probably written down peak PB at least three times in these knowledge of use. They've probably just written down digital underwater photography. They've told you they want to take this course. So at the end of the course, what are you going to do? Sign them up. Or this is our schedule. This is, this is just what we do because of this. Then you got become a debris activist. So, the other thing that you want to do at the beginning of these courses, tell people to download the Dive Against Debris app. There's an app. Does everybody have the app on their phone? You will now, yeah. And then let them know that it's coming soon. They can log in and create a login on the app soon. Not yet. Soon. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get you signed up maybe at the shop. You, they need to sign up and create a My Ocean because the only way to make a difference with Dive Against Debris is to report the debris or the lack thereof. Because it's not even so much about where the debris is as it is why and how it got there. Right? Um, 
I, there was a, a place that I used to just walk at night when I was teaching on an island. And uh, I was walking along, and every single night I'd pick up little wrappers that were about this big. They'd be like all over the place. I'm like, what the? <laughs> and I'd just pick them up, put them in my pockets, and walk away. Well, one night I went to a different restaurant I'd never been to that was on that side of, you know, sort of at the beginning of where I walked. And as I was leaving, I saw one of those little cups with toothpicks inside little plastic wrappers. So people were taking the toothpick, walking on the beach, because it's pretty. What you want to do when you're picking your teeth is walk on a beach, right? And throw in the wrapper. So I went and I said, hey guys, why don't you offer the toothpick without the wrapper? And that actually saved them some money. But again, where's the root of the debris, right? So get your students and show them, right? The ugly journey of your trash. Show them the journey. For if thou goest not on the said journey, thou knowest not, right? Show them how it all goes back. Where did, where did I say that 95% of the plastic ends up? In the ocean, right? And who can make a change? We can, the divers. That new diver right here that's sitting in this classroom that has no idea, just ask him, do you recycle at home? Anybody recycle? Why wouldn't you do it underwater? Oh, it hits them then, oh. Yeah, now like when you see that Coke bottle full of sand, Check it before you put it in your BC, because there may be a little critter that's decided that you know he wants to live in a little bottle. Okay, he's, he, he, this is now part of the ocean, unfortunately, but they've made it their home. Don't make them homeless, but don't just leave it there if there's nothing in it, right? I think that's a huge thing too that people don't realize is because we've done cleanups where. People bring up like coral covered or barnacle covered. So when we're doing cleanups, we should probably be making cognizant of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like when we were in Japan, they had a lot of World War II sites where there's a lot of glass bottles where they used to throw them off the boat. But those glass bottles have been there for 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. and they're covered in, and they've got things that live in them. And people would bring them up, and they're like, "Oh, this is great." Look at all the trash and you're like. Yeah, look at all the life that there was. And that should absolutely be part of your, your Dive Against Debris course. Absolutely. When you get them interested in Dive Against Debris, because of course, what's the next thing? Oh, we're going to watch this. Hang on. When you get them interested in Dive Against Debris, that's when you simply say, hey, guys, guess what? When you take my advanced course, implied consent, we will be doing a dive against debris as one of our adventure dives. And for all you store owners, instructors, everything above, you have not changed the amount of dives. It's the same amount of dives. It's five dives. The only difference is now you're not just counting your dives. You're making your dives count. Right? When you start talking to your divers like this, your new divers in the open water, and this is for, again, those, I don't want to teach e-learning because I don't have enough classroom time, then teach Project Aware. Because now you're offering that time with those divers and you're making, you're making a difference in the way they think about what they're going to be doing when they scuba dive. They're not just going to be going in and being afraid that, oh my god, I'm going to have to take off my mask and I'm going to have to put it back on, I'm going to have to clear it. No. Oh my god. Bubbles. No. You're going to give them something else to look at it as a byproduct. Yay, you're going you're gonna to clear your mask. But look at what you're going to see when you're done, right? I mean, how many of you have been teaching long enough to know that if they're fixed on the, all the problems that they're going to have when they have to take the rig out of your mouth, that that's what's going to happen. So they're going to have a problem taking the rig out of their mouth. You know? Instead, just take it out, lean over, make sure that when you lean over, don't brush anything other than maybe your leg. 
Oh, so they're thinking about the nice, pretty coral. Oh, don't touch, don't touch. <laughs> cool. <laughs> right? Trick them into learning. Adult, and adults are the worst. Because adults come to you with, teach me. I dare you. OK. Well, I'm not going to actually teach you how to scuba dive. I'm going to teach you how to be a diver. And we use Project Aware to do it. The ugly journey of our trash. Marine debris is the rubbish of our everyday lives that makes its way into our ocean. Rubbish travels from towns and cities, over land, down streams, rivers and storm drains into the ocean. It also contaminates our beaches and favourite recreation sites. Once in the ocean, it can drift for thousands of miles to some of the most remote ocean places, leaving a wake of destruction in its path. Who is responsible for this ugly journey? All of us. Our modern day obsession with plastic is destroying our environment. Globally, annual plastic production has boomed from 1.7 million tonnes in 1950 to almost 300 million tonnes today. And if this trend continues, as much as 250 million metric tonnes of plastic could make its way into the ocean by 2025. All of this rubbish comes with a cost. Plastics alone cost approximately $13 billion a year in environmental damage. But it's not just our economy that it's hurting. Every year, thousands of marine species fall victim to our trash. 95% of northern faunas found washed up dead in the North Sea had ingested plastic debris. All seven sea turtle species, over half marine mammal species and almost two-thirds of all seabird species have been injured or killed by our trash. That's almost 400 different species that have ingested or become entangled in marine debris. In 92% of cases, plastics are the culprit. Our trash hurts the most vulnerable too. More than one in 10 species that have fallen victim to marine debris are threatened with extinction. Where does all our rubbish end up? As much as 70% of marine litter has been estimated to end up on the seabed. But there is good news. Scuba divers everywhere are standing up to the onslaught of debris, fins on and off. We're removing debris underwater and logging the data to influence change at all levels. On land, we can work together to stop rubbish from entering the ocean. We can help inform community action, drive changes in infrastructure and waste management policies and identify local solutions. Don't let your dives go to waste. Dive against debris. Together, we can help prevent and clear up this mess for a clean, healthy ocean planet. Is that video on their, their stick? Not on the USB, but... We but you know what? Um, these lesson guides are on projectware.org. I know. So, so one of the reasons, and one of the reasons why I, I asked you to give me your instructor number and your email address, and just do on the front and back, I will email. And this is, this is this is part of what, um, this this has been part of what what I think successful instructors do is they follow up. I will follow up and email each and every one of you. Saying, by the way, congratulations. <laughs> You did the Project Aware course, and we talked about how we can incorporate this into our teaching. But I'm also going to include the link to these lesson guides, to the instructor manual, because it's, brand, it's, it's only been about two months that they've had this, which is why you know, we're doing it now. Because that's cool. And again, what you're doing is you're, you're putting in the hands of your divers, your new divers, you're putting information about why and what they're getting ready to dive into. You're already creating that culture that we talked about in linking the last presentation. You're creating that culture just by saying, hey guys, this is what we're going to be mindful of when we dive. Right? So in the, the next Take Action, what can you do to reduce marine debris underwater? Again, these are easy things. What's, what's one that you might think of? Underwater cleanup. Underwater cleanup. If you see something, pick it up. And this, of course, is when you then talk about if there's something living in it. Don't. Right. What gear might you be able to promote? 
Knives, sure. What else? You seen those dive against the breed bags? Right? You it's, yeah. For the, exactly. And now Project Aware is coming out. There's a, there's a little bitty one that's about this big that you can roll up, and it's in the same size as a little safety sausage. Cool, huh? Yeah. That's like the shizzle because it's clipped right here. You, you take it out, you put it in, you clip it back on. Cleaner ocean. No, 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 the little bitty one. When you're done, you clip it back. Yeah. No, not when you fill it up. You hold it. And you take pictures and you record it, your data, right? Which, oh, by the way, has anybody seen that there's a company that's actually made, you know, those, um, the, the can, the things that get wrapped around turtles' necks? They're turtle edible now. Tur yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I guess that's tedible or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the universe. You can be beer and a snack. There you go. Now, something else the Project Aware is trying to do is talk about sustainable fishing. Talk about um, uh, actual, um, you know, the MSC certified seafood. You can you can trumpet. You can go ahead. You can contact maybe some dive set or some sorry restaurants that are already um, sustainably fished uh, restaurants so that you can suggest them. Maybe you could work together with the Project Aware thing. Um, obviously, when you're talking about, when you're teaching the course, you're gonna go through the, mi the migration of sharks. You're gonna go through why you wanna sustainably fish. Uh, you're gonna talk about the kinds of fish, the kinds of fishing, bombing. You know, literally, places will literally dynamite fish. And how awful this is. There are places that, that, you, can, that you may be teaching in areas you may be teaching in that this is just something that that locally that's what people do that's the way that they do it I mean I actually I actually did my course director course down in the Caribbean and the largest parrot fish was this big that was it and when you talk about that and you talk about the difference between you know a parrot you know that's that it's sad but again like my guy with the antler coral, unless they know about it, it's not their fault, right? It's not their fault. So be the, be the one that, it's that typical, it's that ignorance is bliss or true naivete. If you really don't know, if you really don't, okay, my bad, you really didn't know. Now let's, let's show you, right? So use this to talk about sustain, uh, sustainably fish, sustainable fisheries, for instance. Um, the, the food markings, things that they can look for. Again, what is a specialty that you could promote with this? Fish ID. What are, the, what are the types of fish? Like if you're doing a night dive and you see a pair of fish in the sack, are you going to go up and poke it? No. They don't know that. They just think, oh, pretty sad. Dainty, dainty. No, they don't know that. So teach that to them. So when you take my night specialty, for instance, I'm going to teach you about that as well. Another one. Where can you find which fish are sustainable in your local market? Nowadays, obviously, I mean, most people, again, I started this whole thing with most people have one of these. Check it out. Now there's so much happening in ecotourism. There are websites about ecotourism. There, there are places now that if, for instance, if a, a dive center or a hotel is an eco-tourist friendly, they'll promote that, they'll even help subsidize it. Great. Which goes back to the becoming 100% aware. If you're 100% aware, you can say that everybody that dives with your dive organization is donating back to the cause, right? And with my trick of just adding $1 to each transaction, <laughs> you're funding it. Then take action. Obviously, you're going to have Dive Against the Breeze. You're going to have Project Awares. Hashtag things. I'm a musician, so I, that's a sharp sign to me. But everybody calls it a hashtag, so. So look, I'm on a, on a reef foundation. And uh, there's 
Well, Project Aware and Reef would, would go hand in hand. Why not? Absolutely. Because the other thing is, the, the people that are there for the reef that may not be divers, you can certify as Project Aware as well. Because it's, it's, not, a, it's not a dive specific specialty. Well, we're trying to make these all men, but they're, they're trying to make them sustainable. Part of the food chain is real important to us, economically and in tourism. Certainly, the diving is free. We're doing that. Right. And we're taking the dive sites and making it a project. You know, well, and that's getting to the next thing, which is adopt a dive site. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely, which is just as important. So, for instance, if you've got a dive center and you've adopted a dive site, maybe once a month you're doing a dive against debris. Well, if you're not an advanced diver already, then you can do your advanced course and dive against debris at the same time. So already you've now just set up 12 courses for the next year, right? Because you've got, you're going to have at least one dive against debris per month. And then in that dive against debris, if you're not, like I said, if you're not advanced, we're going to do it at the same time. Boom. That can work hand in hand with your reef. But this is also how you link your courses. This is how you, you build in, you know, maybe you, maybe you do a three day, uh, sorry, a, a three dive, two day dive against debris event. Well, three dives, two days, if you're not advanced and you're not PPB, you do advanced, there's your five dives, one of the dives is dive against debris, last dive is, P, is, is the second PPB, they walk out with three certifications, they've got six dives, you've done a dive against debris, you know, it's an environmental awareness. You can call it, you can call it, you know, an eco AOW, an eco open water. An eco open water would be open water project to wear peak performance buoyancy. Why not? I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you how to be a better diver underwater for being underwater, for the water. Right? And this has been working. This has been working with several of my dive shops. What can scuba divers, free divers, and snorkelers do to take action? We talked about a couple of them. This is an interesting one. Free diving. Do you, do you have to be a scuba diver to do a dive against debris? No. Um, you don't, but wasn't Dana talk, telling us yesterday but to report it, you have to do it in scuba. You right. To pick up, yeah, you can pick up, to, exactly. So there's, there's the rub, but you can get them in. Do you have to be a diver to do a, to do a project to wear? Not at all. You can go, in, you can go into third grade class of, of your kids, which is fantastic. Who here has uh, university contracts? Right? Sepsum. High school. High school, High school contracts, university contracts. This is a fantastic time to get, to get um, a citizen scientist into the schools. Then, what do most students have? Parents. <laughs> you know? You get the student interested in going underwater and cleaning up some stuff, or going underwater and being all PPP'd out. Oh, you know what? My dad's a scuba diver. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's been diving for years. Oh, really? Yeah. What's his trim like? Oh, he looks like this. Interestingly enough, in my area, I don't know about it, but, but high schools now are starting to all offer marine biology classes, which that's what's driving our, our situation, which fits perfectly right here. Fantastic. Because they all have to do uh, uh, projects, social projects. You know, they have to do things for the mm -hmm. community projects. So there we go. Build, it fits right in. Absolutely. Be an eco-tourist, eco right? You see green star up there. There's the blue star operator. These are all ways, again, of talking to your student. In the IDC, you talk about what? what uh, you promote equipment or travel, right? This fits right in. Who here is a course director? Course director? All right. As a course director, I challenge you 
in your next IDC, teach your project aware. Teach your project aware to your IDC candidates because it's going to do two things. First of all, it's going to let them know that there's the project aware, which they need to learn how to teach. But it's also going to show them how to teach it and use it to link. Because, all right, let's see if we can come up with five specialties that we've talked about in this course already. What's, what's number one? OK, number two. Number three. Number four. Night diving and diving against debris. There you go. There's five. Six, quarterly of conservation. In one course, did I have to hard sell any of you to want to take these courses? You've even written them down in your knowledge of use. Right? So all of you store owners talking about the culture of linking, when you get the instructor, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be that Danny DeVito kind of used car salesman. No, no, I'm taller. No. So tell them, don't. Just offer the project aware. They'll ask for the courses. Yes, sir, you had a question. Yeah, uh, I just don't know this, but the Patty Travel, they have uh, volunteer travel stuff categorized. There's the eco tour. You got tourist options on there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which specialties does the pick fee go to Project Aware and not Patty? So, if it's a Project Aware, any donation, any any of like the hundred percent aware, that hundred percent goes to Project Aware. Yeah. Right. So if you're doing the pick processing, mm -hmm. the pick, and one of the things that might be something that we can work on, or that that Project Aware might work on, is that. The larger this becomes, maybe a portion of that pick processing does go to Project Aware. But right now, the pick still is going to go to Patty. The donation, all of the donation, is going to go to Project Aware. But for the diving against the great specialty, for instance, is, is there not something extra that goes to Project Aware that would otherwise go to Patty? Not unless you actually do it. Not unless you actually make that donation. Embarrassed to ask, but well, what's the average time to run? The average time to run a project to wear, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Depends, yeah, I mean, it depends on how long you want it to be. It depends on what you're going to, you know, a project to wear in your area is going to be different than a project to wear in Montreal. And here's something else. How many people have referrals that go away, right? So you do all the classroom, you do all the pool, and you don't get that certification, right? So, well... And that's, that's OK. But teaching the project to wear before they leave, you're getting a certification for it. You're giving a service because then that diver can come back to your shop for those Con Ed courses. Right? So if uh, there's, a, there's a dive center I know of, they would do about 1,200 referrals a year. Because they all go somewhere else to be certified. And they all are angry because they're not, they're not, they're not even making the, the money on a pick. All right. Offer the project aware. That's going to be 1,200 certs that you get. That's not, a bad, that's not a bad thing. Right? Plus then, those students are going to come back because you taught them about the plight of the coral reef. You've taught them about the, the damages of plastic. You've talked about the importance of being, uh, of being neutral, of buoyancy, right? Maybe a dive center that sends a lot of referrals works with a dive center that receives a lot of referrals. And together, you build an eco course, right? All of this just with Project Aware. This, this, is, this is that dry sponge that as soon as you put a little bit of water, it goes shoom, right? How do you research stuff for Eco Holiday? Well, you, you already mentioned that, or Kyle already mentioned, Patty Travel has an eco section. What is the number one best place to go to research? The World Wide Web. If only there were something like the internet, 
right? Project Aware, content project aware directly. They may have rec recommendations. Certainly driving people to 100% aware dive centers as well. Shrink your carbon footprint and then, and again, this is, this is stuff to talk to all your students about the importance, not just from Project Aware, but also why do you want to, like, why would you want to own your own gear? When, when people talk about they don't want to push people into buying their own gear, why not? Don't push them. Tell them that if every time they go somewhere and they're renting gear, they're going to have a different dive experience every single time they're in the water. How are you going to be a buoyancy expert that way? Right? Well, maybe it's those little things that you can link towards, towards actually reducing your carbon footprint, turning the, uh, the thermostat down by two degrees. That's going to make a difference. The same way having your own BC that you know about is going to make a difference underwater. Right? Because you're going to know how to use it. Oh, and by the way, in your PPB, I'm going to teach you how to use it. It all works hand in hand. And then, again, you get them to write it down. You get them to fill out what kinds of things can they do. So if they write down that they're going to, that they're going to take that, that PPB course or they're going to buy that BC, get them into the shop. Put them in a BC. Right? Give back, talk about donate. I mean, and this, this, to your point with donations, people want to actually give the project aware. They want to be part of it. I don't know if you were here when we were talking about a way that you could become 100% aware just by adding $1 to, to all transactions, because most stores can actually sustain 250 tra transactions in a month. All right, so that way you can say to all your students, everybody that dives with me is donating to, to project aware. All right? It's the same thing. Nine times out of 10, if people are just saying, you know what, 10 bucks is going to make a difference. All right, I'll do 10 bucks, right? Encourage that and tell them it doesn't go to, these donations don't go to Patty. They go to Project Aware. They work together, but all of these things put together is what makes a difference. This is how they can make policy change. Then talking about how do you commit. This is the time where you, you finalize it, right? Especially knowledge of you. So when you teach this course and you say, all right, guys, what, what is one of the answers that you have for number one, for instance, on how are you going to become a better buoyancy expert? OK, what did you have for number two? Just, and just in the knowledge of you, what did you have? Alice, proper gear, all right? What did you have for number three? Okay, okay, knowledge of you number three, owning your gear. Do you see how just with going over this, now I can do gear sales, I can get you in a PPB course, anybody write down dive, uh, dive against debris, right? So when somebody talks about a dive against debris, if you guys are my open water course, I can now promote my advanced and my dive against debris. Anybody talk about digital underwater photography? Anybody have a camera? We've got some cameras, right? This is, it's, it's almost like, a, it's like a, a toy chest. There are just so many things that you can go through and literally tailor make for your shop, for your dive site, for, you, for the culture of your shop. Maybe it is, and it, maybe you are going to be, a, f a camera heavy store. I've got one dive center that that's that they started as a camera store basically, underwater cameras, and they went into teaching underwater. Okay, great. So have your course be more geared towards cameras. That's fine. You can still do digital underwater photography. You can do camera sales. You can still do peak performance buoyancy. You can still do gear sales. It's all right there. Then stay informed. Make sure that those people that you've certified to go and do the referrals down in the Caribbean, make sure you follow up when they get back. Hey, how was that? Don't forget, we've got a dive against debris coming up in our local quarry. You want to sign up, right? Follow up with the Project Aware hashtag, at Project Aware. All of those things count. 
right? Debris, debris surveys make a difference. All of that stuff counts. But use this to stay informed, if nothing else, from the environmental side of things. Because again, nowadays, people want that eco-friendly. They want that eco-badge, which by the way, Project Aware is starting to, to have badges um, for like a Dive Against Debris, Project Aware. I mean, the, they're cool. I'm fighting to try and get digital Project Aware cards, right? Why, why send me a plastic card for a Project Aware? and tell me that 95% of the stuff underwater is plastic. Oh, make it out of plastic. well, make it out of recycled plastic, sure. But how about, I, I, as my project aware is a digital card, and if you want a replacement, that's a plastic. Just a thought, right? Then talk about, you know, don't forget to donate. Um, project aware makes a difference. Dive against debris, why not choose a dive against debris? There's also good, so, and I think you heard from Dana, there's going to be sharks and rays coming out. Uh, there are some other really cool fins off, really cool uh, citizen scientist things coming up. Um, more and more, they are able to create and get you tools to get into your classrooms to get this stuff to your divers, right? These lesson guides were, for me, when they, when they came out with these lesson guides, this was a gift from Neptune because a, all of those naysaying instructors that I had, <laughs> if I had this when I had my shop, I would just simply say, this is your orientation, folks. Fill out the paperwork. Let's sit down. We're going to go through this, and then we're going to start our open water course. Period. Right? Because it sets the tone. It gets them underwater. You could do it anywhere. Anybody have, a, like, have to travel to get to a dive site? Can you do it on a bus? Can you do it on a boat? No, you can't do it on a boat. Too short? Oh. Oh. No, but I mean, can you teach? If, if for instance, you had a, an hour and a half boat ride to get to where you were going, this is, you know, trips, liveaboards. Who here has, like, a Boy Scout? Groups. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Then you can get the counselors, you can get everything, right? So there you go. Then, of course, end it, certify them, maybe take them into the shop, show them, show them some of the things that, you can, that you've talked about, the BCs, schedule for the PPP, right? And again, this is not something that you had to work hard at. All you've had to do is show them this course. And they've, they've come up with all the specialties that they want to do. All right? Questions? Yes? So I have two questions. When you show, the, when you show Project Aware to, I guess, people who are non-divers, right. did you have trouble going through all this like jargon? Like, you know? What is buoyancy to a person who's walking on Earth? Like, uh, no, and I'll I'll tell you the way that I the way that I usually um, do it address it with non divers. You ever see the movie The Matrix? Yes. All right. You know that moment when he goes, uh -huh. and he doesn't touch the bottom. That's neutral buoyancy. And everybody goes, oh man. And I usually sign up those people for my open water class because of that. <laughs> All right. And then second question. Oh, that's right. You had to. So you had mentioned that, you know, like, like, yeah, give these open water divers, like, cameras and have them go out and do stuff. Are you suggesting that maybe we bring them, we give them cameras and have them? Because usually when, um, you know, they come diving, they're like, oh, look, my GoPro and whatever. But then I find that when they go down on their first open water dive, they have like so many things going on and they have their camera and then they're starting to like float up and, yeah, no and so. So then, then what, what is something that you, the instructor, can suggest that they take in order to take those photos? The digital. digital underwater photography course, oh. right? Oh. Because as part of it, and the thing is, don't just think that a digital underwater photography course, for instance, is just clicking a photo 
or a white balance. No, it's about getting into the proper position to take that photo. It's about finning properly to get into that position to take that photo. It's about not touching stuff, right? Not just the photo, but how are you going to get into the position to take the photo? If you promote your digital underwater photography course like that, well, yeah. I mean, I just spent you know six hundred dollars on my GoPro with all the gadgets and gizmos because I want to be part of the GoPro thing that's that's out there right now. Okay, cool. You want me to show you how to use it? No, I can press the button. I don't mean that. I mean your body using it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And now you've just filled your class. All right. So maybe like later down and then, but are you, um, so I'm just asking maybe we should not have them bring their GoPros down the first two open water dives. And maybe well, no, you, no, you, you, you want to wait until the fourth dive. Yeah, you want to wait until the fourth dive. All right. Or you do the, or you do the, uh, the Discover digital underwater photography, which is another, which is another specialty. The, the main, again, the main thing that you're trying to do here is show them the options, right? And if you build those options into your bundles, then you've got it. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Is the project aware, uh, are they joining partnerships with things like 40 Ocean or other organizations that are also trying to attempt to clean up? My understanding is that they are doing some joint efforts uh, Project that where themselves actually has, and one of the things that you want to talk about, and I, I'm sorry, I was remiss, I didn't, I didn't hit it very hard. Project Aware, since 2011, has reported one million pieces of debris. That's huge. And tell your students, that's huge. They've reported. They want to, by 2020, report the next million, right? This is, how, this is how much Project Aware has expanded, first of all. So they're more likely to gear or to try and link with Project Aware than Project Aware with the others. But that also being said, the only way that you can report that next million is to actually report it, right? To actually write down and do the survey of debris that they've seen. So yeah, they're, because Project Aware is actually, they're the ones that are actually getting policy change. I see. Yes. Um, I'm just looking through the website for Project Aware, and I'm, I'm wondering where the coral conservation section. Coral reef conservation. Yeah. So coral reef conservation is a specialty outline that is part of your IDC crew pack. Yeah. That is that is offered there. But it's not. I mean, it's not. There's no updated version. Not yet. They're working on it. Anything else? Does this help give you a tool to bring to your shops, to bring to your classes, to bring to your instructors? Yeah. So you think you can start linking this? I mean, do you also see how this is like, this is the grassroots of linking? Because there's no diving involved, and it links to everything else. So if you were simply to put this in with your open water course, your 150 certs in a year, turns into 300, right? Which then, when you, can, when you go out and say, hey, I'm a store owner, and I've done this for the environment, and this is how I've done it, you've got all of that behind you supporting you. I am an eco-instructor. Looks good if you want to go to CDTC. And again, when you talk to your students, don't just count your dives. Make your dives count. Every time you go underwater, right? Everything underwater is alive until you touch it. <laughs> good. Because, because that's, that's the way to do it. This is the way to get them into that gear. This is the way to get them into that con ed. And this is the way to get the culture of diving don't just teach people how to dive. Teach them how to be a diver. This will do it. I will gather the paperwork that hopefully you've written, if nothing else, your name, your instructor number, and your email. I will follow up with you 
I will email you the link to all of this stuff. I will track your certs because I want to see how well, and I want to hear stories of your better linking practices. How has this happened? How has this helped get stuff into your shop or into your, you know, maybe if you're an indie instructor? Because uh, for me, this made a difference in my teaching, you know? And it's something I'm very, very near and dear to my heart. So thank you very much for your time. Um, Kyle, do you anything else? No, I need to. Perfect. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Thanks, guys.